Thanks for tuning in to the Reframing Ministries podcast, where we provide strength for today and hope for tomorrow for caregivers and their families. We'd love to hear how these episodes have helped you. Would you share your story in the review section of your preferred podcast app? Our team at Reframing Ministries loves to hear stories of hope and healing, and now we've played a small part in them. Now, on to Colleen Swindoll Thompson's discussion. I would like to welcome you to Insight for Living interview with Cindy Farini. Cindy lives in Ohio with her husband, Joe, and they have three children, which you're going to hear about. One of them has special needs. And Cindy and I have talked about the important issue of caregiving. So often as caregivers, we run out of time, we run out of energy, and we find it so difficult to find time for ourselves. Cindy understands that really well because she and her husband have been raising Joey, who is now 31. So Cindy, welcome. And Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me to come today. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, I would like you to first just tell us a little bit about your family. Well, Joe and I have been married um, for 33 years. And as you said, our son Joey is 31. We also have a daughter who's 28 and soon to have our second grandchild. And then our youngest is a new, new college graduate, and she's 23 years old. And so everyone is home now living with us. We're all trying to find our way. Um, everyone's <laughs> sort of in a transition right now. So we're all deciding what next. And that's kind of where we are right now. But we've had the, the pleasure as well as the challenge of raising Joey for these 31 years of his life. And we just think that because we've had these years, and most of them have been pretty good, we have just such a great privilege to be able to encourage and give hope to other people who are also, you know, in that same place in life. And so I hope that's what we'll get to do today. Now, Joey's 31, which is a lot older than the younger generation that we have, not that we are old, but we have to admit, <laughs> our kids are older. And there had to have been, well, first of all, let's go back and ask, what are some of Joey's symptoms or some of his diagnoses, however you'd like to work word that? Thank you. Um, Joey has cerebral palsy. Although he is quite mobile, he doesn't have the tight muscle tone that most of us are familiar with, yes. with people who have CP, but he's much more of the, the lucid, flaccid kind of uh, muscle tone. Okay. So when he was little, he didn't do much of anything for quite some time because he didn't really have the muscle tone to support him, including being able to pick up his head or lift his head or hold his head up for quite some time. Okay. And of course, that required a lot of therapies. But along with the CP, um, he is mentally retarded. Some people prefer to hear that as mentally challenged, mm -hmm. um, but he's slow. And at 31, I would say he's probably in terms of behavior and understanding somewhere around a three to four or maybe a five-year-old on some things, but he can read quite well. That's and amazing. So, which is interesting. And so he can read signs like danger or keep He can out. read them. Does you know, he follow them? Those kinds of <laughs> things. He can read the sports page, uh, who won, who lost. Okay. That's a big thing for him. And he also has epilepsy, which is controlled quite well for quite a while now with um, a medication. And he has some huge allergies. One is to peanuts, and that is fatal. So we have to be very careful of his diet and what he eats, especially when he goes out. At home, it's gotten easy after 31 years. So those are that's Joey in a nutshell. So Joey is... 31, you've listed off a whole lot of challenges right there. Um, I can't imagine what it was like, especially when he was little, not having many people to talk to because so many of the things that we know now, we didn't know then. So did you struggle with any of those caregiver emotions such as depression or isolation or feeling like, does anyone understand my life? You know, did you go through any of those things? Well, I remember uh, being a young mom and really being so excited about my first child and yeah. the dreams that we all have of going to the mom and tot play groups and going yes. to the library where everybody can sit and listen to a story and being with moms and going to the playgrounds. And very soon, I would say around six months old in that range, we began to see some signs. Uh, I think because he was a firstborn, there were some things that we 
kind of overlooked in right. terms of, well, you know, the size of his head or okay. um, things he wasn't doing. He wasn't doing anything that a six-month-old should do in terms of cooing, in terms of rolling okay. over, none of those things. Okay. So when, when we began to recognize that there were going to be some things that needed some work or therapy or something, my life just shifted into a gear that required, um, as you know, physical therapy, occupational therapy, yes. speech yes. therapy, doctors, yeah. uh, CAT scans, all the different kinds of tests to rule out X, Y, Z to find out that it's ABC. And so it took a long time for many of those things. And I would say isolation was a big part of it because while I never felt that I was depressed because I felt like I had great help, my husband was always supportive and helpful. We each had sets of parents that were very helpful with us. And really at that time, I only had Joey. So that was... Right. That was a little easier than after the girls came along in terms of timing. <laughs> yeah. How do you handle all that? Right. But I think I didn't really talk about it as much as probably maybe I should have, maybe because I didn't think people were interested, but also I didn't really want to be that broken record of right. that's right. all she talked about talks about. And okay. so maybe my closest friends might say that I did talk a lot about it because they were good listening friends and I thank them for that. But I would say isolation was probably the biggest thing because I couldn't go to those things that would put me with other moms. And when I when I was with other moms and things like therapy, well they were there for their children, I was there for mine. Right. So, and you're so there tired. was an interaction between yeah. between us. It was we're getting our job done, and then we go home and then continue that at home. It's a never-ending cycle, isn't it? Yes, 24-7 okay. is, yep. is definitely it. Now, did he have any sleep challenges at that time? You know, Joey did when he was little, but okay. I have to say that probably a lot of it was due to me because I had a hard time letting him cry. So yeah. a lot of times he would get up, but, you know, when you're going through different things, you don't often know, is it because there's this problem or is it just because he's being ornery and can't <laughs> sleep or won't sleep or wants mom or dad? That's and so, so who knows? I have no idea. But once the second and third child came around, eventually Joey started to sleep. And now as a 31-year-old, sleep is, he, he is great at sleeping. <laughs> he doesn't usually wake up. And How even if we awesome. take a trip and he's... Um, with us in a hotel room, okay. he can just go right to sleep. So uh, so those of you who are going through tough times with your kids sleeping right now, it probably will get better. We'll pray that it does for you. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I think sleep is overrated because I lost so much of it. That yes. <laughs> and it just gets so hard. In fact, you almost go on overdrive. I don't know. I remember with John in the, the early years, when we're in that searching place, just feeling like I was, it's that fight or flight syndrome where you go, okay, well, we're going to go to this program, we're going to go to this therapist, and then this therapist, and then this doctor, and then this doctor, and you feel almost like a pinball bouncing back and forth. Yes, and, and what I think also, as we talked about isolation, what people don't understand when we say how we feel so isolated is they think, well, you seem to be handling things so well and you're doing all these different things, but doing all these different things, it's not like we're going out to lunch with friends or dinner with, you know, our couple's friends. It's more like we're meeting the needs and serving that 24 seven that we just talked about. So, right. you know, what we're doing takes a lot of time and a lot of effort and I do think we go on autopilot. And the reason we do is because we love our child and we're willing to sacrifice our sleep or whatever it takes to help them to be the best they can be. Well, in going through all of that, tell me how you came up with the term me time. Well, first of all, I wish I would have done it a little better when I was younger. But the, the advantage is now as an older woman, I get to share with younger women and I have a number of younger women in my life that I hope that I can speak some encouragement into their lives. But I just feel like so often it's, and especially for people like myself who are goal oriented and disciplined to be able to get things done. A lot of times we can get a lot of things done. We can check off our projects. We can get together with people, but somehow we forget that we need 
some time to ourself. And I think that me time will look different to each person. And not just we women. I think our husbands need that me time too. Yes. And how does that look for you? What is what is maybe the one or two things that you really enjoy doing that you will try to carve some time out to be able to do for yourself? And one of the things I did when I was a young mom, um, I didn't leave my home, but I enjoyed sewing. So when my kids I took a nap, that. I went down the basement and then and I sewed until they got up. Now, sometimes I think maybe I should have taken a nap or just kicked my feet up and read a book, but I did feel like that was life-giving to me, so it was good. And that would be the key that I would say, what is life-giving to you? When you're finished, you're feeling like, oh, that was fun. Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's you know, calling a friend. It can be simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Um, what would you say to the caregiver who is either single or divorced or um, has so little funds? And one of the research studies I read this last week, it said that caregivers and families with special needs children or are caregiving for a special needs elderly person are in a, most live in a poverty type situation because the funds are getting drained. And so for the person who says, there's no way I can get away, there's no way I can do this, how do you solve that or what do you say to that? Well, you know, everybody has to be creative. And if it's a matter of calling a couple of friends over and playing some silly card game or board yeah. game or something where you can have sort of a lighthearted competition where you kind of, in your mind, go away for a while. You might not yeah. be able to leave your home, but you can leave in your mind the premise of, I'm stuck here. You know, brew know. some coffee, get some different kinds of flavored coffee, invite a few friends That's over. Fun. I think one of the things when I was younger, we had, and I'm not exaggerating, there have been several years in our lives where we had probably 2,000 people in our home, whether it was for coffee, a How meal, big is overnight. <laughs> And the reason was because we didn't get asked out very much. And so if I wanted my kids or Joey especially to have friendships, I had to invite them over. If I wanted other families to be incorporated into Joey's life, I needed to invite them over. And I do feel that I have the gift of hospitality. So please don't anybody feel like, oh, if I don't do that, you know, I, I don't count or something. But you don't have to do anything big. Just have a cup of coffee. People love to get together. And sometimes the simpler, the better. Because if you do it too fine, sometimes people think, well, I can't do it like that. And I wouldn't right. invite you back. So right. just to do things that are fun and, and even just laughing at everyday things. You're yes. so right when you say that, you know, some people are in poverty because they don't have the funds to go out and do things. But sometimes we're in poverty because we don't even take a, a lighter look at life sometimes. Yes, let me I just think that's you, huge. Yes, it really is. And just let me give you one example. One time, uh, Joey and I were at just a, a Target. And I happened to be in Florida, and I was purchasing a couple of things that I needed. And I was getting these plastic plates that I thought, oh, these will be perfect for just everyday kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was just in a mood. So he was not very much fun to be with. And <laughs> for those of the, well, no one will really know what he looks like. He's six foot four. So it's not like you can put him in a uh, cart a heart. and there he right. sits, you know? Right. So he was not happy to be there. And he was, you know, reaching and doing all these different things. So I'm putting these things in my cart and I'd go and look at something else only oh to God. find that he had been removing everything I put in my cart <laughs> oh back no. to where it was. And I was well, so he's efficient on what I was doing that I didn't notice that. <laughs> well, you know, that would have been a great thing for me to just get really mad at him sure. and just say, you know, yeah. what are you doing? You're messing yes. things up. But instead, yeah. I just laughed. It really was funny. And then he laughed and he thought it was funny. And then we came back to the place where we were and I told Joe and he thought it was funny. So sometimes you just have to make light of some of the things that can be very aggravating, frustrating. I think the critical word there was a different perspective and that is to look at life differently and so often we try to force what we're going through or what we have planned into the life of a child who doesn't cooperate with those plans. And when that happens, they're angry and frustrated 
and we are angry and frustrated. And so you have to, again, be creative, like you were saying, and learn a different way of normal. And the fact that you bravely went to Target is just wonderful <laughs> because we've had so many Target experiences, I can't even tell you. Sometimes, sometimes you have to do the impossible. <laughs> Yeah, it is the impossible. That's when you hope and hope that things are open all night long, so you can go really late and leave them sleeping. But exactly. nonetheless, it happens, and you have to go and get through the day. And those fun laughter moments are essential. You know, I don't think I ever mentioned this to you, Sydney, but at Insight for Living, we have my dad's um, laughter CDs. They are hysterical, and it's yes, just I'm him telling really yes. simple <laughs> jokes. Or like funny stories or things that he and my mom have done. And he ends up with his belly laugh, and I end up laughing. And so there have been days, I kid you not, this is going to maybe sound kind of weird, but it comes from being alone. There have been days where I've pulled up videos of just watching babies laugh. Or just seeing people laugh at something. Because you can pull that up, type in laughter. And it has changed my outlook after seeing these babies just laugh or looking at people laughing. There's something that comes about when you turn your heart towards finding things lighter. Exactly. Um, I agree. It's been, it's been critical in our lives, and it sounds like it has been in your life as well. I want to ask another question that we talked about earlier, or referring to this being creative. And um, what are some things, aside from sewing, that you did to be really creative in finding time for yourself or finding the refreshment that you needed to make it through the next day or two? Since we only had three children, and I know some people have so many more, I was able to time it so that each of them would have, together, the same time, have their nap time. And so I really used that time for me. And if I was really tired, I would take time to sleep. But I would use that time sometimes to make phone calls that I didn't want interrupted, to sew, um, maybe to read, to do do different things like that. But now that I'm older, some of the things that I like to do are different than when I was younger. And so I would just say, you know, whatever thing, whatever floats your boat, Mm -hmm. figure out what it is, because that will motivate you. If you figure out what that is, it will motivate you to do it. And then after you've done it, you will feel so refreshed. But one of the things I've done, and you and I talked about this before, with some of the younger gals that I am sort of mentoring or in their life and really I consider them my friends but they're younger their children are a lot younger they could be my children these girls could be my kids but I have a couple friends and what we've decided to do is we've made each of ourselves a passport and we just used cardstock paper and just put some extra papers inside stapled it put our picture in the front and then in, mm-hmm. we know we can't travel we can't go to Italy we can't go to Greece we can't go here and there which I'm not complaining I get plenty of travel and the Lord's been gracious to allow my husband and I sometimes alone but we don't have as much as we thought we would at this time of life so my friends and I have made these passports and instead of moaning about I can't go here I can't do that we will find a place to go eat that is of that nationality and then we stamp our passport and we go to that place and I will usually get or they will get a library book from the kids section not the adult section just the Uh kids section just that tells a little bit about that country so we talk about it enough so that we could pretend like we went and then um, such a great idea conversation that is so fun. So where, how many countries have you visited? <laughs> uh, just a few because we don't get to do it as often as we'd like, but we have something to look forward to. So we've been to Greece. We've been to Italy. And sometimes if we want to go to a different state, we also put that in there too because we're just having fun. <laughs> that, have you shown the people at the place where you're getting coffee that you're, you're out you on know, a travel I, vacation? I don't know if we did. I oh, man, you got to brag have. on it. We probably should, don't you think? It's so creative. I think you should. That's so (laughs) wonderful. Um, Even though you didn't go through a lot of the lower moments with finding yourself very depressed, I did go through those seasons where I just couldn't look on a brighter side and I couldn't find the, the ability to be creative because I was so exhausted a lot of times which is a telltale sign of needing to have me time. But at times, some of us can't 
even find the want to, what do you say to the person who maybe is watching and it's all they could do to just get up today? That is a great question. And let me just let me just also just say, just to correct some something that I said, I did have low times. I don't think I was ever depressed. Okay. Like a clinical depression uh -huh. where I would need to, to talk with a doctor or get medication or uh -huh. anything like that. But I want to encourage women who might feel that they're there to go see a doctor because right. if you had a broken arm, you'd go get that checked. And if you're exactly. not feeling like you normally do, right. you know, get that checked. I don't feel that I was depressed clinically, but there were some times when I was pretty low. And I do remember one time, all the things with our son were really coming to light of how how he really wasn't going to be doing as much as we thought he would down the road. Like I think he was about three and our other child had just been born. And I remember my mother-in-law was going to come over and help me. And you know what? I didn't want to be around. So yeah. I packed up the kids as difficult as that was. And I left a note and I said, I will be back later. Uh, I'll see you later. I just took the kids to the park and I okay. took them to a different park. I just didn't want anybody around. And so, you know, if you find yourself in that place, I think, first of all, not isolating. And I, that probably was a horrible thing for me to do, isolate and take my kids and just be by myself. But you know what? I just needed to be away. So I would say, you know, what, you know, what kinds of things could you do to reach out? That is so difficult if you're feeling depressed, discouraged, but that discouraged feeling can lead to depression. And so the longer you linger there, the, the probably the deeper you'll get into a depression. So I, I would say reach out to maybe one or two close friends. I do remember one friend who just, just happened to call me. We know how that is, those divine uh, I love them. Coincidences. Yes, you can't but she would just happen to call me at those moments when I was at my lowest. And she was somebody that I felt like I could just cry with. And I remember her calling one time and just me going, Wah! That's great. You know, when I was finished, she didn't have to come over. She didn't have to take me out to dinner or, you know, rescue me from something. But oh my goodness, I felt so much better to know someone listened. And maybe if I could just take a moment, those people who might be just wanting a little encouragement. We have a Facebook page that's called Unexpected Journey, which is also the title of our book. And I try in Unexpected Journey to tell funny stories about Joey, to tell little stories about other people, and just to keep people sort of connected, not yes. feeling isolated, yes. not feeling like I am the only one who feels this way. Right. So when you're in it, you feel that way. You do feel that way. And by the way, your page, I love it. And Thank it's you. very encouraging. And your book that you just kind of briefly mentioned, Unexpected Journey, is one of the best books I have read. Thorough, helpful, informative. You Thank and Joe thought through so many of the day-to-day -day things that people go through. And I loved it because you read about the re you uh, wrote about the realities of life, but I didn't feel like you were just of on another planet like okay they're a little happy i felt like you said <laughs> this is reality these are the struggles and here's how we've turned our mindset around to embrace what we have on our plate yes. and that perspective is so refreshing you give such great tips and tools and then just the stories that you share i mean my husband and i have been in the evenings pulling it up and just looking through different parts of it because you have been so, so um, honest and yet so helpful in thank that. You. And so, thank you. And just, you know, too, we interviewed, I think we sent out 250 surveys and got back something like 75% of them because I think people that's wanted to share their life. And so yeah. we have a portion in that book that talks about others' stories, little bullet points yep, yep. of things that they share. And that was so meaningful because. Each of us have our own journey. Yes. And so the other people that we interviewed, you if you get the book, people, you will you will find yourself in between the lines of yeah. each of these people who share their stories right. because we're all in the same boat. And right. you know, every day we have to wake up with that same thought of, okay, what am I going to do today and how am I going to make it work? Because even at 31, uh, Joey has behavior issues. Uh, he he's not always pleasant, but you know mm -hmm. what? 
I sometimes have behavior issues and I'm not always pleasant. Oh, her. no kidding. So we have to work through those things. In fact, it's so funny because Jonathan's new little tagline, because he has one every so often. And, you know, it's been busy around our house and, and getting back into the school routine. So he'll just look over at me and go, he's getting cranky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I sure am. <laughs> Because and we you know do what? Have to make what a great sense. place to put humor because we can either get angry about that or we can just right. say, you know what? You've got a point there. Because exactly. most of us that have a child with special needs, they can call things pretty much uh, with accuracy in a lot of cases. You know, and a lot of times I've had to tell myself, you know, what's the big, what's the worst thing that can happen now that the bag of flour is spread all over the place? I mean, I can either be really mad and stuff my vacuum, or as we did, I had the kids lay down. I'm like, okay, we're going to make snow angels. And I think it was in July. But I think before having John and before having to think more creatively, I would have been really frustrated. And yet I thought, you know, they're probably really bored. I was on the phone, and havoc runs wild when I'm on the phone. And yet we turned something like that into a better situation. Absolutely. Did you ever feel that little cranky attitude when maybe there were some people or some young moms or dads complaining about not being able to get their nails done or they couldn't go to the gym and you're thinking, I don't think I have nails left and I certainly am not going to go to the gym. <laughs> did you get fussy with that or what did you do? You know, I think, I'll just speak for myself, but you know, that feeling never goes away. So I've, as we keep saying, I really have to make it a mindset. You know, I'm in a stage of life right now where my husband is semi-retired and we could take off, well, he could take off his couple days of work every month. He could take them off anytime he wants and we could go traveling, but we don't have the freedom as much as we would have liked at this stage of life. And so maybe when the kids were little, it, it was more, you know, Joey will never play soccer. I have a sister who's she has four children. Three of them are boys, and they were, they were so athletic and sharp, and could just do everything so well. And my brother had two sons and a daughter, and they were all athletic. Now I could have just, you know, you know, Joey will never play soccer. Well, that's true. Joey never will play soccer, but he can play Nintendo and PlayStation really good. Yeah. And so I <laughs> yeah. had to look at what, what is it that he can excel at for him. And then for me, my, my attitude had to be, you know, it's really not important if he's not coordinated or can't walk right or can't ever do those things. But furthermore, I wanted to be happy for my sister and my, my brother and sister-in-law yeah. and my yeah. friends whose kids could do those things. They were happy when my girls did musical things or fun things at school, and they would also support Joey in different things that he did, too. They all looked different, but... We, I, I know for me, I had to continue to say, you know, be happy for everybody else because, first of all, they don't really understand. I, none of us do. when Unless you're in it, none of us really understand it. But those who are listening, you understand it. And you know <laughs> that it can be very challenging to have the right attitude. But you know what? Find a friend who also has a child with special needs. And when you're really struggling with that, take a moment and just say, you know what? I've really had it. You don't have to name the friend. You don't have to name the relative. But just name the situation and then pray about it together because that's the best way. Sometimes I'd come to my husband and, you know, just be sort of sad or mopey about things. And he'd put it in the right perspective without, without telling me I was wrong because those are our human emotions. We will go through those. And, and let me just say another thing, too. I remember coming home from something one time when the kids were little and I remember saying to Joe in the car, you know, I can't believe it. Like you and I never did drinking or drugs or anything like this for our son to have the problems he has. And we had been around a family who had some of those scenarios in their life and their kids were smart. They were good looking. They were like, you know, we thought they were perfect. I'm sure they have their stories to tell. And my husband said to me, which I thought was really good. He said, you know, though, if Joey was in that family, because they were struggling in their marriage a little bit, he said, what would happen to Joey in that family because their marriage isn't, you know, as, as ours is right now? And I really had a turnaround at that point. And, and I thought, you know, 
God put Joey in the right family, and I just need to go with that. And I have to be reminded every once in a while, none of us learn these lessons and then we got them down pat. Right. You know, we're, right. we're on to the next one. We often have to revisit them. Thanks again for listening to the Reframing Ministries podcast. If Reframing Ministries has been helpful in your life walk, we'd be honored to have you partner with us in prayer and in financial support. We operate entirely and only on your generous gifts and donations. Would you consider giving just $10 a month to help caregivers and their families receive resources full of help, hope, and healing? You can partner with us at reframingministries.com slash give. I think a lot of times, too, what I learned about myself through having to continually to give more, and there were times where I would resent that, but I learned this connects to something a little bit deeper. It's not just about not being able to go out. Maybe it's about an expectation that I had that I'm not going to be able to accomplish or fulfill or do, and I'm more irritated about that. It's just that the Lord used having a special needs child to get to that deeper issue. And there have been times where, well, even, you know, as recently as yesterday, where you go, but I didn't plan the week this way, or I didn't plan today to be this way. And I, I now go back all the time to thinking, well, I don't think Jesus planned to have to come to earth and live here among us and die. I mean, he left heaven of all the places to leave. If anyone could be resentful, I think he could have been. But no, he came with that attitude that Philippians 2 talks about, as a servant, being selfless, having his mind focused on his father. That, to me, has become a huge changing point in my mindset. And I keep thinking of Romans 12, 1 and 2, to continually be renewing my mind all through the day. Some days I have to do it a lot. It's an hour-by-hour thing. Other days I can get through the day, and my attitude hasn't been as much of a challenge. But all these things, don't you think, are a part of the Lord just refining us and bringing us to a different place that I would have never been had I not had a Jonathan in my life? I agree. And I also think that, you know, we go through some of these things and we think that we maybe get some one of them down pat and we move on to the next one. But really, you know, until we've raised our children for a longer period of time, well, like Joey, 31 years, we can't really see the faithfulness of God. Right. Uh, you know, sometimes people, when, when they have a child and they say, I'm going to write a book and their child's three years old. And I'll think, wow, that's great. <laughs> no. They haven't even gone through puberty yet. <laughs> I know. And I think, you know, that's great because that's one season of life and someone will benefit from that. But right. to be able to benefit from sort of the well-rounded um, information and wealth of learning that some of us can provide, you know, we, we have to learn that God does provide. And often when I had plan A and B, and I'm an organizer, I have organizational seminars. That's what I always kind of was doing back in the day. And I would would have my schedule all set and I would have my list all ready. But you know what? Sometimes things happen in the day or our lifetime that change everything. And so, you know, I think from my perspective, one mm-hmm. of the things that I see is over the course of these 31 years, I would never have met some of the most precious people like okay. you that I have met and, and many other people who also share a child with a special needs with me yeah. that we can, you know, commiserate, even complain a little bit, but then not just stay there, but come out on the other side with, you yes. know what, I got a good perspective today or, oh, I feel better. And, you know, sometimes me time, I'm hoping somebody's taking their me time to watch this today, that they get a That's chance a to idea. say, wow, you know, Cindy and Colleen, they, they're struggling day to day, just like me. We're no different. And I can do it too. And so, you know, I'm looking back on 31 years and I just want people to be encouraged that, you know, you might be exhausted where you are right now, but there are many opportunities along the way. If you, as my mother-in-law used to say, Cindy, God made you an oak, but you're going to become a willow. <laughs> And I am. I'm but I don't want to be a willow. This willow I never thought I could be. I'm still an oak in some places. Uh, he's still working on me. But, you know, <laughs> how is God using plan A, B, C down to X, Y, Z in your life that you would be able to say, you know what? I see such a special purpose here. I would have never written a book. 
I would have never had opportunities on radio and what we're doing now to be able to share with people a d- different things. I am yes. so grateful. And I'm grateful because God has worked through my life and the life of my son and my husband and my daughters to bring us to a point that if, if he were to stand before us right now and say, would you like me to heal Joey? I don't think I'd say yes. And some of you are probably thinking, you've got to be kidding. Not. <laughs> I would have thought that during the, the adolescent years and before. But once he got kind of adjusted, you know what? We would probably not change him. If God would have come in about 12 or 13 years old, I would have said, right now, go ahead and heal him. Yeah, no now, kidding. God has used him and used all those, those interruptions in life those times that were so difficult and times where, you know, you don't get me time for a week or two or a month or six months at a time. So just keep, for those who are listening, keep that in mind that those me times, you've got to take take them when you can get them. Well, and you know, it's very hard as a caregiver to really get the weight of that truth that you have to fill your soul and fill your time with a few things that you really enjoy. And I didn't know that you liked to sew because I took up sewing when Jonathan was little and found that very fulfilling. And then even before Jonathan was born, my older two are 18 months apart. And I remember thinking, I'm not gonna ever, well, sleep is overrated. So there were times again where they were just constantly on the go, running around. And me time was for me to lay on my back and put my feet up on the sofa and just breathe. Yes. And there was a refreshing sense of calm that would come. It made me to be a better mom when they were up for their naps. And it just caused a peace in the home, which we all long for. I know, Cindy, that you said um, that you did not need medication and you hadn't struggled to that level. I was clinically depressed. And for several years, I did take medication. And you may be watching thinking, well, medication is bad or... And I want to say, you know, like you said, Cindy, if your arm's broken, you go to the doctor and you have it set and then you get well. The same is true for emotional issues. If you're at a place where there is no real joy um, and you're feeling sad and you're feeling so much grief inside, there are people who can listen. And I encourage people going to a great Christian counselor who can help them kind of sort through the emotions. A lot of times grief causes us to be more in need of things. It wears us out physically, uses our um, chemicals in our brain differently, and it just is nice to get some things out. One of my dad's favorite sayings is, thoughts work themselves out through the lips and through the fingertips. And it helps to talk, and it also helps to journal some things. I know you have, excuse me, you mentioned a minute ago two different books. The, your organizer, your calendar. Tell me a little bit about those two that you have. Well, I have a Bible study that I call Balancing the Active Life and also an organizer, which is really more for women, but the Balancing the Active Life, anyone can do it. You can do it as a couple. You can do it okay. individually. Anybody from about 16, 17 years of age would benefit yeah. from it just to learn kind of how to balance different things in life. The organizer, it's called Get It Together. It's more for women. And actually, uh, both of those also have Facebook pages that I try to make entries every day to give people different ideas. But But one of the things that I have in the organizer is I have like a page where you can fill out to do something uh, with you by yourself in terms of personal so that me time gets taken care of with your spouse or a friend, um, with your children, projects, saving money for different things. And it kind of goes along on a chart. And the reason that I put that together was just so that people would start to recognize Maybe where they're deficient in their lives. Where are they putting all their time and where are they not putting time at all? And one of the things uh, an organizer friend of mine said when she looked at it, she said, you know, I've seen charts like this from different people who do organization. She goes, but you know, I've never seen on a chart where there's actually me time. And so I find that it's very important throughout your month to figure out, you know, what kind of me time can I get? And then yet, if you don't get it, maybe your child's been sick in the hospital for a a month and you're at their side for a month and you're not going to get me time. You're not going to get friend time. You're probably going to get very few showers. Just let that month go and then 
fill these in again the next month when when life becomes a little bit more normal. And for some people, I recognize their lives are going to be very challenged for a very long time. And if I could just add from there, you know, some of the things that we could do if we can't just get me time in our own home and you maybe need to get out and get a little refreshed, find people who are willing to come over and, and help you, but also be careful not to overload them, overwhelm them, or have them all the time to where they feel like they're raising this child and you aren't. Uh, maybe a family member, a, f a good friend. And when people have offered to do that for me, and they mostly have offered more of, of recent, I put their name on a list. Because if I get to that point in my day, we were talking about being depressed or, or angry or frustrated. If I would get to that point and I needed to get out, I have a whole list of names that I could call and say, hey, can I drop Joey off at your house? Or could you just come over and pick him up and take him for a half hour ride? And I don't feel often like I have to do that like I did when the kids were little and when he was small. But sometimes people are willing to help, but we don't ask them. Yes, that's huge. And I have a hard time with that because I don't want to infringe on their schedule. And it's just sometimes easier to do the work than it is to ask for help. But for our last question, I wanted to ask you, what were some things that you all found were helpful to you as a family that a church body could contribute to? I would say earlier in our church life, we've been at the same church for 30 four or five years. Joe and I actually met there. We actually went to high school together, but then we re-met there years later. How fun. Um, so I would say, you know, back when our church was real tiny, there wasn't anything or anybody who really could, could help. And I remember there were a few moms, two moms in particular that had special needs children, but they were quite a bit older, maybe 15 or 20 years older than Joey was at the wow. time. And I remember sort of seeking them out, sort of to be a mentor or a help. But you know what? They were in the midst of a really hard time and they couldn't really provide for me what I needed. And I recognized that and I didn't feel bad. I, I understood that. But I think now that our church has grown, we have a great uh, ministry so that parents can get out once a month. They have the same night each month so that parents can plan it. That's and awesome. It's That's wonderful. We have not had to take, take advantage of that for various other reasons. We would do it if we needed to. Right. And I won't go into all that. We have um, some family who can help if we need to go do something or if we're going out of town. But, you know, a church can come alongside and just even to have an, uh, an occasion like that once a month for parents to be able to have some time alone. Right. You might drop your child off at the church and just go home and watch a movie. Right. Or, I've done that. Uh, exactly. <laughs> good. Yeah. Or go shopping together or go out to dinner or something, whatever whatever you like to do. But also in our book, Unexpected Journey, we have a chapter that we just titled Ministry that we give a lot of ideas of things awesome. people can do yep. that would be very helpful to just reach out. So let me just give a couple ideas. Okay. For instance, if of late, people that read my book, our book, they will say, you know, I had friends of ours, they'll say, I had no idea you know, how, how difficult that was because yeah. you made it look so easy yes. because we love that child. We do what we need to do and we do right. make it look easy. So right. now they'll say, you know, is there anything I can do for you? And as I mentioned, I'll put their name on a list. If there is, Excellent. I'll let you know. But really right now in our life at 31 years old, Joey's pretty settled and we have a great routine. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to look for someone who has a need Maybe it's somebody down the street. Maybe it's somebody in the church. Maybe it's somebody you just happen to meet someplace. Maybe you'd like to just one night just surprise them and drop off a meal that could be frozen if they don't need it that night. It's huge. How many times would we have loved a meal oh my in the gosh. middle of a hospital week, you know? Yeah. Or to call them and say, you know what, I'm just going to the store by myself. Maybe they're, Maybe you're older and you have some freedom. Could I take your child with me? Knowing full well, you'll probably get nothing done. Or ask if you can take them to the park. Or what works for that family? I'm assuming that that, that is uh, ability is is an, uh, is an ability for them. But what would work? Could you take that child to a movie? Could, wow. What could you do? And you will be a hero to that parent. Oh my gosh, a hero. That's, that's right. 
I am kind of following up on that too. I remember our church when I was when John was a lot younger, Stember our community church, they did all kinds of creative things. We had people call and ask if they could clean our carpets and they sent over a carpet cleaning business and cleaned our carpets. They would sometimes have the youth group come over and help out with mowing the lawn. Um, they would come over and clean the kitchen. There were times where just having someone come over and fold laundry, it doesn't take a PhD in the disability to help. And that's one of the things I want to do through Insight is to really encourage churches. You don't have to necessarily take care of the child, but taking care of the family because the challenges are family related. Yes. The whole family is changed when you have a different child. Exactly. And, so just, and sometimes, you know, we, we want our me time, but sometimes we have to have time with individual other children. And mm -hmm. sometimes we, you know, we put so much time and effort into the child yeah. that has the special need that the other ones are wondering, well, what about me? Just like right. we're saying, what about me? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a great idea. And, you know, we, we could come up with a list sometime right. that would right. just really help people. And I think what you said is so helpful because you might be getting the grass cut or the windows washed mm -hmm. or something else, which allows you that time to have me time. Yes. But one thing I would encourage people is to, tr to begin to say to yourself, I will not feel guilty for sitting and doing whatever my me time is while someone is out there mowing the lawn. Right. Because right. our first instinct is to say, I'm going to feel guilty to do that. I'm going to go help trim bushes or something. We need to take that time and then just be so appreciative of them yes. helping us out and, and allowing us that me time. A yes. lot of times people will have a difficult time being with our special need child mm -hmm. because they don't understand maybe how right. they talk. or right. And that's understandable. Child, say that again, please. That is very understandable. Yes, and they, you know, they're not with them to know their quirks and their ins and outs and their behaviors. And especially for a child who maybe has a lot of drooling or, you know, issues with their mouth and throat that that maybe are hard for someone to, to wipe them up or, or diapering. to engage in that way. Yeah. They might be like, I'll be all about doing your laundry, but I just don't really know if I could do that. Right. That's okay. Right. I would. I have talked with... Um, a small group leader and have have said let's come together and talk about how a small group can adopt a family or one or two families yes. and it's amazing how even the women of the group could set up an email with the mom and the men of the group can set up an email with the dad or maybe they can have the dad join them every other week for a game night or going to play basketball I've even said what if we had the kids of that small group come and play with like with be my kid, you know, I have exactly. two other kids who takes them to ice cream. There was a while where we couldn't get out at all. And so they would get tired of being home. And who can help throw a birthday party? Because if we threw a birthday party in our house, it would be so loud and overwhelming, that would never happen. Why well, wouldn't want John, I wouldn't want Ashley and Austin to struggle with not having birthday parties and going to movies and doing all the fun things that their other typical friends could do. And so there's so much that a small group or a youth group can do to be involved with the siblings life. In fact, I'm going to put in our show notes some some tips that you and I can continue talking about after we're done with this. I think it's a great idea because I believe churches want to help. It's just how do we help? And finding those things out is so important. You know about Key Ministry, Key Ministry Foundation started by our friend Steve Gersovich. They are doing a knockout job with their respite care training program. And I would encourage people to go to keyministry.org. I think it's .org. Steve's going to kill me. Um, but they have excellent resources for how can a church provide respite care. And Johnny and Friends also has some excellent, excellent resources for churches that have special needs programs. They have teaching resources. I mean, there's a ton of information out there on that. And then, Cindy, I don't know if I mentioned to you that lotsofhelpinghands.org or .com. I don't have all those together today. Um, that's a great online resource, and it'll be in show notes, for how a family can set up a calendar and work within a community on scheduling babysitting times, doctor appointments, therapy appointments, date nights. It's kind of an online organizer place, and you get your own um, little group name, and then people can check in. 
So it's not yes. necessarily, here, I'll come babysit your child, but here, I can pick up groceries for you, or I can come yes. and vacuum your house, or I can come and, and take Ashley to get ice cream together. Those yes. kind of things, are, don't they mean so much? Yes, because by providing those kinds of things, that will provide us with some of the me time that we very seldom yes. get. And, and if I could also just sort of tag to that and to say, those people who are providing this help, um, if you can't do it with just sort of the open thought of this is allowing her to go get her nails done like you can do, or, you know, kind of let go of that judgmental, like, wow, I went over and folded laundry for three hours and she went out and had a cup of coffee with a friend. Like, it's really easy to get in as, as it is for us to be jealous or envious of, of them for being able to do it right. so easily. It's easy for them to also say, wow, you know, I'm not sure if that was the best use of their time, but let them be the judge of that. And those really? of us who need that free time, if it, if it will benefit us to go have coffee with a friend that we can cry with, laugh with, that does understand, you know, that's kind of the, the opposite side of the coin. But we so appreciate it because when when someone gives us that free time, uh, you become our hero. You become someone very special to us. And I hope that all of us in this situation will also show appreciation by our words and our thankfulness, even a quick thank you note, whether it's in the, the regular mail or, or the email to just say, you know what, I cannot believe how, how great my nails look or how refreshed I feel or wow, I took a nap today for a half hour. I cannot tell you how the world looks so different to me. So, you know, we need to appreciate each other, encourage each other. And that's what the body of Christ is all about. That is what we are here for. And if we're isolated, and I know I was isolated a lot, but if we're isolated, some of it is our own doing. And I will take responsibility for that. But now that we have uh, you and I sharing this, we're making the listeners responsible for themselves to get out there and say, I need some help. And don't be ashamed of it. People that are willing to help will come alongside and help you. I know you mentioned your Facebook page. And then you also mentioned the other page that you have for encouraging people. Oh, that was with the Unexpected Journey page. Yes, uh, I have my regular Cindy Farini page, but I also have Unexpected Journey, which Great. will show the cover of our book. Thank you so much for bringing this up. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And then the other ones are Balancing the Active Life. That's on Facebook. Nice. And Get It Together. I think it's Get It Together Organization or Organizational. Okay. There were other ones that had that name. So I, th I think I gave those to you. Those will be in those Yes, notes. and those are going to be in and, show notes as well. Um, and we have a website, either joefarini.com or cindyfarini.com. And I welcome if people would like to email us through the uh, website or uh -huh. through the Facebook pages. I respond to everybody. Okay. So if you don't hear from me right away, I will. You we'll died. Back with no. You. <laughs> um, you know, one of the goals for Insight in our special needs program is to really come alongside families and individuals who may not be the special needs person, but the family is because they all are struggling with the same need for encouragement help, support, advice, direction. And so we have our special needs face, Facebook page as well, as well as a blog that I'm able to write each week. And I'm so thankful for the opportunity. And it's very good. Well, it's thank very you. Good. Well, thank you. I just, again, as part of just the outflow of, you know, Lord, you've brought me through a whole lot of stuff. And if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have made it through. I, I know there are some of you watching who may be feeling that way. And today you may think, there's no way that I'm going to make it through today. On your own, you probably won't. But with Jesus, you can. Because as Cindy has talked about today, how important it is that we look through different eyes to change our mindset in order to see a bigger picture. And that is that God is allowing circumstances that are far bigger than you can handle because we're not made to handle life. If we could, we wouldn't need him. They're so much bigger. Therefore, it forces us to depend upon him. And so I want to thank you, and I want to thank you, Cindy, for being my friend, for offering such great words of wisdom. I and um, we both want to encourage you as a listener 
or as someone who's viewing this to really pursue the resources that we've talked about. Get on our Facebook pages and write all you want. I put funny things on mine all the time too because I just like to laugh and it's very random. But then I also put a lot of verses on there because that's what's been the undergirding to getting through a lot of the challenges that were far bigger than I could handle on my own. So thank you, Cindy, for your time. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for watching our Insight from the Interview with Cindy Farini as we talked about me time. You can find a lot of the information that we covered today in our show notes that will be on our site. Thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Colleen.